Snacking Swifters, I'm Professor John Gallagher, and let's begin setting up our Snacktacular app. We'll create the app, install Firebase and Cloud Firestore components, and set up the back end of our app so that we'll be ready to build in multi-user authentication, data sharing, and image sharing in subsequent lessons. Let's start that snack hacking. Well, Swifters, if you've been following our tutorials from the beginning, these first steps are ones you've gone through several times, so I won't give you the step-by-step, -step, but do create a new Swift UI project in Xcode. I'm going to call mine Snacktacular UI. You don't have to add the UI, but I put mine in there to distinguish this Swift UI version from a UI kit version that we created in my earlier course. And as usual, I've created some resources for you. You can find those just as we've done in the past in the open Google Drive at bit.ly slash prof-g-swiftui-files, all lowercase. And in there, you'll find a logo as well as an app icon, and we'll use the logo as our launch screen as well. Now, if you're new to our series and you don't know how to set those up, you can find instructions in the first app in our semester-long playlist. If you're new, though, this Snacktacular app shouldn't be the first app that you build if you're not familiar with Swift and SwiftUI. Now, when you've got this working and set up, you should see a nice logo as a launch screen, and you've got this nice icon on your desktop. Now let's install the Firebase package into our Xcode project and set up the Firebase project in the Google Cloud Platform through our browser, and this will eventually let us provide multi-user login, data sharing, and image sharing. And the steps I'm about to show you should be pretty much the same if you build similar apps in the future. Now just a quick word on the tools that we're using. The back-end services in this app are provided by Google's Firebase services. Firebase is a company Google bought several years ago. The products are very easy to use, and they're really robust, so they should scale if your app is fortunate enough to to take off. The initial use is also free until you hit a threshold level, although you may need a credit card to sign up for basic services. You won't be charged unless your app really accelerates, and I've never had a student hit this threshold just through classwork. It's pretty high, and if that happens to you, it's a good problem to have because it means your app is a runaway success before you've even finished our course. Now in this app, we're going to start out by using Firebase Authentication. These are the tools that easily allow the user to create an account and sign into your service. We'll be able to tell when someone's logged in, if they're a valid user, and we'll use this to provide access to the app's data. Now, while we're starting out using basic email and password login, Firebase provides a bunch of additional tools to allow you to add features so that users can log in with other accounts like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and you can even support Apple's login format with email hiding. Now, the database we're going to be using is Cloud Firestore. If you're ever given the option, do not select the option for real-time database. Cloud Firestore is the next generation database Google has introduced offering features beyond the initial Firebase database, so we're going to be using Cloud Firestore. That's the best choice. This is a NoSQL database, which is what nearly every major firm will use in social apps. It'll integrate real-time updates in your app, so if another user makes changes to data, adding a record or deleting one, those changes will be immediately pushed out to all logged-in users that have their app up. That change will happen automatically. It looks magical. It's really neat to see in action. Cloud Firestore also allows offline access in case you lose internet services, but it'll sync back up when you're reconnected. Now, Cloud Firestore itself doesn't support saving large files like images, but Google has a product for saving large files called Firebase Storage, and that integrates with Cloud Cloud Firestore. So we're going to save a pointer to every image in Firebase storage to the Cloud Firestore database. This will be able to allow us to easily integrate the two so it seems like one experience for users, and that's the right way to go about handling images using these tools. So these are really professional products that have been refined over many years. Lots of major firms and apps use Firebase services. CNN, Lyft, Shazam have all started out using Firebase services at some point. Venmo, NPR, Alibaba, which is based in China and is one of the world's largest e-commerce sites. So you're learning a powerful and valuable skill. Now, just to mention, even though we're building on iOS, it is possible to integrate the same backend into other platforms too, like Android, the web, or even Unity, which is a popular game development platform. And there are lots of other services as part of the Firebase service suite that go way beyond what we're covering in this app, including machine learning services, analytics, support for A-B testing, ad integration, and a whole lot more. So now you know a little bit about this, let's set things up. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is install Google's additional Firebase packages into our Xcode app, and that'll extend Swift and Swift UI to give us additional commands so that we can use the Firebase tools that we want. Now, to install the components we need, we're going to use the Swift Package Manager for this. Earlier users might have had to use something called CocoaPods. That approach led to lots of problems, so I'm really glad that Google now supports Apple's Swift Package Manager, which is integrated right into Xcode. So to install the packages that we need, we need to find a URL to copy and then use it to install the Firebase packages. So to find the URL we need, head to a browser and search for a Firebase Swift Package Manager. And you should find a page like this one, options to install Firebase in your Apple app. 
Now visit that page and you should see an area labeled Xcode that shows a URL for installing this using Swift Package Manager in Xcode. So copy this URL. You could use this icon over on the right if you want. Then head to Xcode, then select File Menu, Add Package Dependencies. This will bring up a dialog box that allows us to enter a package URL. In the upper right hand corner, paste in the URL that you just copied and press return. And you should see an option for the Firebase iOS SDK. SDK stands for Software Development Kit. You should be able to leave all of the default options the way they are, and then just click on Add Package. This may take several minutes the first time you do this. Mine might be a bit faster since I've done this before, but you'll eventually see a place where you can choose the parts of the Firebase Toolkit that we want to install. Now we're going to install three parts to this package, so find and install Firebase Auth, that's A-U-T-H. That stands for Authentication, which is the stuff that validates logins. Then pull down the Add to Target column and select your app's name, and do the same for Firebase Firestore and Firebase Storage. So that's three packages, Firebase Auth, Firebase Firestore, and Firebase Storage. That's all we need for this tutorial. And by the way, if you decided that you needed other packages in the future, you could always return to this screen and install those additional packages later. Then click the Add Package button to install the additional Firebase enabling code into your project. This is gonna let our project access all of the additional Firebase data structures, methods, and more that we wanna use. The toolbar also shows some progress happening but you'll eventually see a bunch of things show up under the package dependency, and we can now proceed to ignore these. This just means that we've installed all the files in our project so we can begin to work with Firebase. Now, when you work on new projects, you're gonna to have to go through this exact same step. So adding Firebase using Swift Package Manager, but we won't have to do this again as long as we're working with our Stacktacular project in Xcode. So now let's head to firebase.google.com, and this is where we're gonna set up the back end or the cloud portion of our project that our app in Xcode will connect to and integrate with. Now just a quick note to my students, while we used to be able to use our Boston College email accounts for Firebase products, it looks like this doesn't work anymore. So if you've logged into Chrome using a bc.edu email address, log out and log back in with a Gmail address. And if you don't have a free Gmail address, go get one and use that. Then once you're logged in, click on go to console in the upper right hand corner. Now, if you've never used Firebase before, you won't have any recent projects, but everyone should have a plus icon that says create project, so click that. And then give your project a name. Snacktacular is fine. I'm going to call mine Snacktacular UI just to distinguish it from my old Snacktacular project that I've got in here from my UI kit version of this course. Then click continue, and I recommend turning off enable Google Analytics for this project. I won't be covering that in this series. Then click create project. Then you'll see a progress indicator spin, then a message that your project is ready, and you can press continue. Now notice that I'm in my Snacktacular UI project, and let's set up an iOS project, so click on the iOS icon. Now under register app, you're asked for a bundle ID. Now we can get this from Xcode, so in the project navigator, click the blue project icon, and now under the general tab, you can see the bundle identifier, and you used to be able to highlight and copy it here, but it seems now if you wanna highlight and copy this, you've gotta to head to the signing and capabilities tab. You can highlight and copy the entire bundle identifier. It's just something that Apple uses to identify your app. It's probably something like com.yourname.theappname. Then head back to the browser and paste it into the Apple bundle ID field. Give your app a nickname. I'm going to call mine Snacktacular. You don't need to add anything to the App Store ID. Just click Register App. Now next, we need to download a file called Google services infolist and install this in our project. So click this button. And my browser is set up to ask me where I want to save this file. We're going to be dragging it into our project. So where you save this isn't important as long as you remember where to find it. But this is very important. If your browser saves this file to your downloads folder or similar folder, then the next time you go through this to set up a Google Firebase project, it might append a number to the end of this file. That would happen if you didn't delete your old Google services info file from your downloads after you do this installation and you absolutely do not want a number in this file. It needs to be spelled exactly as you see it here. So be careful when creating subsequent projects if you download a new .plist file and you'll have a different one that's specially configured by Google for each Firebase project you create in the cloud, then make sure that it's saved without any numbers after this. Don't use your old .plist file, use the current one that you're downloading. Just make sure that the name is just like it's listed here with the same capitalization and punctuation and no numbers. So 
So I saved mine inside of my Snacktacular UI top level folder. Then I'm going to click and drag that file into Xcode. I'm going to drop it into my project navigator. I like to put mine right underneath the assets catalog. Just don't put it inside your preview content folder and don't put it down in the package dependencies area. Now you should see a box like this. Everything else should be checked like you see it here. Then click finish and you can see that the Google services dash info file is now part of the project. This means my project's going to be able to find the Google Cloud services we're going to be working with, then return to the browser and click the next button. Now we've already done this next step here, add Firebase SDK. That's what we did with Swift Package Manager, so click next. But we do need to follow this next step to add Swift installation code to our project. And I've noticed many Swift UI tutorials online have you create an init function for this in your project's app file, but Google actually doesn't recommend that. This is the procedure that they recommend for your app file. They mentioned this specifically during a recent Cloud Firebase Summit, so use this procedure. Now the first thing we need to do is to import Firebase Core, so I'm going to click this little icon to the right of this line. Now I've got this on my clipboard. I'll head to Xcode. I'm going to click on the Swift file in the project navigator that ends in the word app. For me, that's Snacktacular UI app. So this is the first file in your app. We've seen this before in other lessons. And right here under import Swift UI, I'm going to paste in what I just copied, which is import Firebase Core. Then I'm going to head back to my browser and I'm going to highlight this entire app delegate block copy this. Unfortunately, Google doesn't have a little icon that will copy this entire block. It only copies this one line here. So you do want to highlight and copy the entire class through the classes close and curly. Then return to Xcode and paste this under your import lines. Now there's one more line that you want. Head back to the browser. That's this line here. That's this UI application delegate adapter property wrapper line. So I'm going to click on the little icon to copy this one line. We just want this one line. Head back to Xcode. Make room just under the struct definition line and paste it in here. Now, frankly, we don't need to wade into the weeds about what each line of this configuration code does. The only time when we write code like this is when we use Firebase. And Google tells us exactly what to copy and paste into our code whenever we'll need it. Just know that you've got to add this code to your project's app file each time you want to begin working with Firebase. Now, it's always a good idea to try things in the simulator to make sure everything's configured properly. It's not going to do anything, but as long as we don't get any errors, we can be sure everything's set up okay. First, make sure you selected the scheme that you want to use. Then I'm going to click on the play button to build and run in the simulator. The first time you do this, it'll actually take several minutes to install. But if your app runs with no errors, congratulations, you've set up a Firebase app in the cloud and connected it to your Xcode app. Now, if you return to the browser, click next, then click go to console. You'll see you've returned to your Snacktaculous project console page where you can add different services to your app. In our next lesson, we're going to add Firebase authentication services, and we're going to set up the very basic first steps in our interface so that the user can sign up with an email and password and then use that to log into our service. Hack on, Swifter!